Hey guys, in this video, we will be giving you guys tips to practice that we have collected from our over 10 years of experience. Oftentimes, an original move will not look good until it is practiced enough. This is because a lot of moves require smoothness to be properly appreciated. So, while practicing does not sound particularly creative, it is the last step to complete the creative process of creating a move. You might be thinking that practicing sounds very straightforward. You just do the move over and over, right? And the answer is yes and no. While you certainly could just do that, there are a lot of other details that you can pay attention to while practicing that could save you lots of time. The first is to understand the nature of the move you are practicing. Before you begin practicing a move, you should have some idea of how realistic the move is to perform in real life. Some moves can be practiced to the point where you can consistently perform it flawlessly, while others require some luck or other conditions to even pull off once. An example would be my move convertible. This move requires you to catch a packet in mid-air on the short edge. However, there is no realistic way to ensure that you will catch the packet on the short edge instead of the long. So, there is some luck involved while performing this move. A lot of cardists refer to these kind of moves as video moves. While it may sound negative, it certainly is not. These moves often have a much stronger impact than others when presented together in a video and it makes landing them in real life all the more satisfying. Before you begin spending lots of time practicing, make sure you know if the move is even possible to be able to pull off consistently. Otherwise, you'll be wasting a lot of time trying to practice moves that are practically impossible to do consistently. The second tip is to know the proper deck condition for the move you are practicing. Some moves, such as the one-hand triforce and other structures, require a very pooped and old deck to be able to perform while other moves like fans and spreads require a relatively new and slippery deck. So before you practice, make sure you have the right deck to practice your move. Our third tip is to find the right environment to practice. By that, we mean you should find a place where outside forces cannot easily influence the cards. For example, you would not want to practice aerials somewhere windy. You should also make sure that you can easily pick up your cards and that your cards will not be damaged when dropped where you practice. From our experience, good places to practice would be a bed or sofa. Our fourth tip is to take breaks when necessary. There will be times when you are completely stuck on a move. You know the move is possible to land, but there is just one movement you cannot get down for some reason. At times like this, instead of getting frustrated over it, you should take a break instead, and return to the move after some time with a fresh perspective. Oftentimes, a fresh perspective is all you need to discover what you have been doing wrong or discover a new method to perform the move. This leads us to our fifth tip, which is that when you are stuck on practicing a move, it also helps to jam with others and show others your progress. Other people can look at your move with a different perspective and can point out things or ways to perform the move that you may have never thought of. Our sixth tip is to have short and frequent practice sessions. Studies have shown that distributing study time over several sessions generally leads to better memory of the information than conducting a single study session. This phenomenon is called the spacing effect, and that applies to cardistry and muscle memory too. So instead of sitting down and practicing for 10 hours straight, it would be more helpful to practice one hour per day for 10 days. Our seventh tip is to practice moves interchangeably. This is mainly to avoid boredom as practicing the same move for a long time could be tiresome and you can lose motivation to practice. So, to keep things fresh, you can practice multiple moves in the same session. Our next tip is more for the later stages of practicing, and that is to take every opportunity to practice unconsciously. For example, you can be practicing while watching a movie. This of course assumes that you know the move well enough to be able to watch the movie and not be distracted by doing the move at the same time which is why I said that this is more for the later stages of practicing a move. Our last tip is a bit more optional and does not necessarily work for everyone, and that is to practice in front of a mirror or camera. A lot of people find this to be helpful as you can see your move from a spectator or camera's perspective, and this will allow you to fine tune your move to make it more enjoyable for your spectators, regardless if it's in person or through a video. But others find practicing in front of a camera or mirror to be distracting. So whether this tip is actually helpful really varies individually. So those were our nine tips to help you practice. We are sure you will find at least a couple of them helpful, so make sure to try them all out. Once you finish practicing your move, you now have a complete and original creation.